everybody again uh, the business technology summit it's been awesome the last couple of days been incredible here um very lucky today to have great presenter and kip Sorensen. uh you guys are going to hear a lot uh today's session is going to be ai uh, driven viva uh, topics boost productivity and a lot more um we're going to kind of go into that and then a little bit about um us here at journey team growing company we have over 130 uh, team members uh over 130 or excuse me 350 active customers the past 12 months almost 30 years in business um, four partner designations and over 1300 uh, projects completed over the last five years which is pretty incredible um, and also 90 percent uh, of our customers are be willing to be a reference for us which is which i believe speaks uh, volumes to our quality of work um, again uh, a uh, little bit more awards that we've gotten as a company uh, were, as you can see in the top left corner, uh, 2021, 2022 Inner Circle of Microsoft, uh, been named Microsoft Partner of uh, Partner of the Year twice, 2019, 2020, and um, then all all these there's like five, six things right here uh, saying top places to work, and I could honestly say it's it's the best place I've worked by by leaps and bounds. It's incredible to be here. We really care about our our clients and and the the leadership here care about uh, their employees. Um, and then, you know, what makes it special is we we work with the whole Microsoft stack, uh, ERP, CRM, uh, Azure, uh, Power BI. Um, everything you see here is what we could do. Um, we have lots of people with lots of lots of experience um, that could handle all these things and are experts in this and Kip being one of them. Um, but anyways, kind of a short intro. Uh, we're we're excited uh, to have you guys here. I'm going to send that that survey out in the chat right now. Please fill it out, and I'm going to send it again in the um, at the end of it. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, Kip, time's yours, and I appreciate it. There you go. Uh, let's get a pulse really quick. And and the nice part about having a smaller group like this is is I can answer more questions and and get things really specific to you guys. So let me just launch this poll. And I, I want to kind of get a, a pulse of your guys' understanding of Viva topics. Is this a brand new topic? Like I've heard of Viva and this sounds interesting, or is this uh, I played with it kind of five star rating here, or at least five trophy rating. So if you guys want to take a second, you should see the, the poll in your on your window right now, or you can open up the chat and see the poll there. And submit your results in regards to kind of your understanding of Viva topics. And that might, uh, it will pivot or it will adjust kind of what I cover today based upon what I get back from you guys. No one wants to submit a rating. Okay, there we go. All right, so 20% one, 40% two, uh, twenty percent three, okay. So no, no fours or fives necessarily out of the five responses that we got. Okay, no, that's that's perfect. You you, you guys are going to uh, this is going to be great then. So a little bit about myself before we get into Viva. So um, Kip Sorensen, I'm the current practice director over the collaboration content management team. What we specialize in is collaboration and content management, right? So that's company intranets, that's document management, and that's all things collaboration. And what that really comes down to is probably one of my favorite definitions of knowledge management. And knowledge management is the art of and the classification of content in a manner so employees can effectively get access to the data they need when they need it. And in the grand scheme of things, when we talk about how do we store documents, when we talk about search, when we talk about these other tools, that should be at the heart of what we're trying to do, is getting data to employees in an efficient manner and eliminating the noise, right? We live in the information age. I said that in our last session. Usually the problem we have is not that the data is not there, it's we can't get to it because there's so much noise, right? One of my favorite quotes of all time is from uh, Platt. He's a former H HP CEO. And he said, HP would be three times more effective. I think it was three times more effective if HP knew what HP knows. So, and, and I think that's safe for all of us to say that our employees and our organizations, we have the data. 
We have the data to be highly more efficient than we are. The problem is, is getting to it. And some of that is the elimination of the noise that comes with it. The other part is the tooling to make it easy to get to that content. And that's ultimately what Microsoft is attempting to do in the subject of Viva Topics. OK, so this is this is Microsoft's um, Microsoft's definition of Viva Topics, and I'll, I'll remove myself from the thing here. Right. So Viva Topics uses Microsoft uh, AI, and I'll explain that here in a second. The Microsoft 365, the graph, search and other services to bring knowledge to your users in the 365 apps that they use every day. And we'll talk about what are those apps. I'll demo that out and show you guys. Viva Topic helps helps to address a key business issue in many companies, providing the information to users when they need it. That's what we're we're addressing. Now, I do have some opinions that they could do certain aspects of this better than they are. Um, but but we're getting there. We're getting pretty close in regards to how this works. Now, one additional definition and before we hop into the demos is what does knowledge management mean for you guys? Right. It is access to project data, right? It could mean a glossary within your environment, such as I'm a brand new employee. I just got onboarded. What the crap is an EOW? Right. Or what's the SOW or what's all these acronyms that's unique in this organization? What business units make up the company and what's the difference between the business units? How do I get to the applications I need? What's products? What products do we sell? What's the definition of the products? Where are the corresponding assets around that given product so I can reference it or use it for marketing material or use it within a project? What events and things are happening? What locations do we have? What clients do we have? And more, right? And so I, I want to get, I'm trying to paint the picture here that knowledge is so diverse and it's not just about the projects related to my department. Sometimes it's this org wide content that is a little elusive and difficult for us to define within the ecosystem. And I think that's where Viva Topics has really come in and shined in regards to a product. Now, let me get rid of some some uh, unfortunate uh, confusion uh, as I switch up my my uh, sharing here uh, in a second. So the, the first confusion is uh, and let me share my screen. And Ethan, if you don't mind, please confirm if you have my screen up. Yeah, I could see it. Perfect. OK, so the, the first thing that I want to point out. Is that. When the, the term Viva, <laughs> there is a lot to this, right? There is Viva goals, which is organizational KPIs. There is now Viva Engage, which is Yammer being exposed to teams. There's Viva Topics, which we'll talk about today, which ironically is not really in Teams. It's mostly just SharePoint. Um, there's, there's Viva Connections, which is our ability to expose an internet within the Teams environment. Microsoft recently announced Viva Amplify. Um, it, there's a lot here, right? The term Viva. What I want to just focus on is let's just remove the word Viva because it kind of gets because then you might start trying to figure out how topics relates to these other things and they kind of don't. So just forget Viva today for our session and let's 100% focus on what is topics and how do we take advantage of them within our environment. OK, so let me attempt to give you a summary. So what Viva topics is. Is. Microsoft's, I think, Microsoft's first play into stepping into the space of knowledge articles without them being knowledge articles. So what they've done is there is an um, artificial intelligence in the back end that will scrub your content within your tenant and they will create topics. Now, you might say, well, Kip, what's a topic? Well, let me give you an example. And, and ironically enough, some of these topics I did not create whatsoever. In fact, if I scroll down, here's some suggested topics. So if I click on um, FedEx, believe it or not, Microsoft uh, AI created a topic called FedEx. Now, let's take a look at what this topic page is. Interesting definition of FedEx got pulled from Wikipedia from an outside source. And then it's saying that these three sites 
customers, sorts of communications, and cloud practice have relevant content related to FedEx. So in this example, what is FedEx? A company, a partner that we might work with. Really interesting, right? If I, if I hop back to the managing of topics, I'll see other topics that are acronyms in our environment. They might be technologies within our environment. Uh, certain intellectual IP clients, right? Uh, we're in here as just a topic, right? So what topics are, is there really common terms within the environment that might be applicable to an employee to find? Now, ironically enough, we could go out of our way and, and provide better definition than that, but the artificial intelligence just kind of finds a bunch of stuff. So let's use this journey team topic page as an example. So we have the name of the topic at the top, and then we have alternative names, J team, journey space team, J T A M, right? All kinds of different spellings, all uppercase, lowercase, different scenarios, company, right? Then here's our definition of what journey team is. Suggested contacts of individuals that I might want to contact regarding the topic of journey team. Then I have suggested files that I might want to reference, suggested sites, and then right now I, I see zero related topics. Okay, this is a topic. So ironically enough, if you look at this, all of that a topic page is, is a pointer to the related knowledge within our environment related to this topic. If you notice, this topic isn't the company summary document. Now, that document, if it did exist, might show up down here, right? Because it's a related document to this given topic, but these documents aren't stored on this page, right? Some of these documents are in the cell site, they're in a customer folder, they're in the tech summit template, they're in a product catalog, I might even have something on my OneDrive being referenced here, and, and I can see how many views are related to this actual topic within these documents. Same thing with these people and same thing with these sites. So that all that Topics is doing is it's becoming a pointer to the knowledge related to this said topic, right? And our definition that we can put around a topic could mean anything. Could mean acronyms, could mean clients, could mean products. It could mean a number of different things. And Microsoft has some new technology coming down the pipeline that will allow us to do some classifications, and I'll share that later. Okay. Um, and let me be mindful and careful here. Let me pause for a second. Questions around just what Viva Topics is just off the bat. And just hold the chat open here just for a second, just in case. Done. All right. I must be doing a good job. All right. So let's let's talk into what we can do with these topic pages, and then I'll talk about what the user experience is like. So what I'm looking at right here is the topic center, and I'm the administrator. Okay. So I'm kind of seeing a bunch of stuff that that users normally wouldn't see. I see managed topics, and I can go through this list of managed topics, and I can prove I can choose to approve them. Right. So this one's already confirmed. So I can review and publish it. I could go down here to suggested topics, Microsoft Word, and I can confirm it, right? And then I can review and publish. I can look at it. Once again, it's getting a definition from Wikipedia. I can scroll down and then I can, uh, and I this didn't show up on the last topic I had up, but I could see these suggested relationships, right? So Microsoft Word, RFP, Bookings, functional requirements, scribe online, exchange 2010. These are related or discovered connections between the topic Microsoft Word and these other topics. Now, what can I do with this? Well, I could do a lot of stuff. So if I edit this page, I can add alternative naming, right? So right now it's Microsoft Word, but I might have Word as an alternative name. I might be a Word uh, processor, right? And I can come up with other ways. I can alter um, and use my own short description. I could come here to the pinned individuals and I can say, you know what? Nothing personal, but Ted's a, a sales account rep. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So I'm gonna remove him. Um, I'm gonna, you know, Roth's too busy. Let's not have him be a point of contact. Uh, and we'll make 
and I don't want to be harassed about word. So we'll leave Hector, Tim and Kendi. As the confirmed contacts, OK, then I can pin additional resources, whatever I want in here. So if we have a formalized, I don't know, document about Microsoft Word and the proper ways of using it, I can actually navigate to, across my ecosystem, grab that Word document and pin it as an important asset that should be referenced. Now, the artificial intelligence didn't, let's say, grab my file, but I can go physically out of my way and go pin it myself if I wanted to. I can also navigate and see these suggested files and I could say, well, you know what? Some of these, this Contoso document, you know, those Contoso documents are highly valuable. You know, I'm, I'm going to pin that. And so I could choose to pin that as an important document. Same thing on sites. I can add sites that are relevant um, and, and pin additional sites if I wanted to. And I can come down here and create other connections. So if I type Excel, I don't even know if there's a topic for Excel. Yeah, there is. So I could choose Microsoft Excel. And now, that's a related topic to Microsoft Word, okay? I can turn on commenting on or off, and this part is the part that I'm probably most excited about. So you'll notice I modified these sections, right? I could do things to these sections, but worst case scenario, right up here at the top, I can add a section just like in modern SharePoint, and I can insert web parts, and I can have images, highlighted content, add my own points of contact. I can have quick links for external resources if I wanted to, embed a stream video, you get the idea. And I can create content that might be more relevant instead of just referencing a document or a file, maybe I want to inject it here within the actual topic page itself, okay? And then once I'm done, I can hit publish. And now I have officially published the Microsoft Word topic page, right, for consumption. Now, let's talk about the user experience. Oh, let me let me point out one other thing. Can I do this from Teams? And the answer is yes. So if you guys hopped over to your Microsoft Teams environment and you look up an app, you'll see that there's an app called Topics. And if you guys haven't figured this out already, Teams is really just the glorified another version of a browser, right? So literally, I see the Topic Center within Microsoft Teams. And on the home page of the topic center, I have these suggested topics. And then I can also confirm that I'm a connection, right? Or a point of contact for certain topics. I can see more most relevant pages and et cetera. And I can manage topics just the same as I just did in the browser. I can actually do that from within Microsoft Teams, okay? So that is kind of the administrative view or one of the administrative view uh, views, I should say, of actual topics. You'll notice that the, the end user view on the homepage here of topics is there's no navigation, right? Like I can't like navigate to topics under a subcategory of whatever. That's not what Microsoft has created here. What they really have created is topic center. And then we get to the topics a bunch of different ways. I would say that going or navigating to the topic center is probably not the ideal user experience. However, I do feel it is one of the gaps because I would love to not navigate to a knowledge center and be able to navigate through topics based upon classifications and other things, which theoretically you could do. You'd have to configure that and kind of build some stuff up. Or as I'll share later, there's some new functionality coming to topics that might make that possible for us. But for now, think of the topic center as the administrative view of topics. And then I'll go ahead and dive into all the ways that we can get to topics across the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Now, with that in mind, let me hop back over to our meeting and just kind of see if we have any questions. So Jason, that topic list you showed at first, is that an admin view or does each user have their own list and can publish their own? No, Jason, it is an admin view. Now you can configure like multiple administrators over the topic center, right? So we can have uh, knowledge managers uh, be managing that, but uh, the end user view would would almost give us that home page, which is suggested topics. And uh, are you a connection for this topic? So it'll ask them some questions on the end user side, um, but it's very minimal. Okay, it's not really a user experience. Okay, any other questions on Topic Center before we hop into like how do users consume these topics? I want to make sure that you're clear on 
what is the topic page? And they're all stored here in the topic center. Any questions? And as I wait for some questions in the chat. Um, right now, there can only be one topic center per tenant. Okay, so that does kind of mess with our architecture a little bit, depending on what you guys were thinking. All right, no other questions? Okay, let's talk, let's walk through the user experience. Um, and I'm going to kind of go over, I think, the most common user experience. Um, and then, and so it's going to be kind of jump all around. Okay, so let's hop into, um, let's hop into SharePoint. Okay, so what you see here is our company internet. We call it Basecamp. I understand there's some technology now that's called Basecamp. It's not the same tool, right? It's, this is what we call Basecamp. Uh, this is what we call our internet. And if I go to our inter enterprise search and I type VUMC, right? That might be a short acronym that some employee would have no idea in regards to what that means. So I'm going to hit the, the search key. And I and if you'll notice in my search breadcrumb, I'm kind of just in case you guys don't understand what's happening here, I'm getting the search results for Basecamp. If you look at that breadcrumb at the top, right? And I can navigate down and I can see a number of files. I can paginate, right? And I can do different scopes, files, news, images, et cetera, okay? If I go to my breadcrumb here and I search at the level of organization, right? So when I do this, I'm searching for the term VUMC across all of Microsoft 365. You'll notice at the very top of this page, I get a topic card. So this is user experience number one. And so I get this topic card that immediately shows up at the top of the page. It provides a description of what the UMC stands for. So I can see that it stands for Vanderbilt U uh, University Medical Centers. I can see points of contact, resources, and related topics. If I click on the title of the topic, I, it will take me to the topic page. And as you already know, right, I see that content, related people, documents, sites, and related topics. OK, now with the navigation down here at the bottom, I can mouse over this topic. I get what we call the topic hover card and I can click on Azure AD MFA. And what do I get? I navigate to the topic, right? And so same thing happens here and I can see these relationships right between these topics. OK, so that is experience. User experience number one is search. OK. All right, user experience number two. Um, let me find, sorry, I had these browsers open so I don't have to navigate around as much, okay? Um, oh, uh, this is project delivery. All right, so here is a, sh a modern SharePoint page, right? Um, it's under the project management office site uh, for us. And this page illustrates our project delivery process with our clients, right? We have client meetings on a regular basis. We do backlog refinement meetings, sprint planning, um, sprint backlog meetings, and then we do sprint planning, right? And here's our cadence, and this is what it looks like. And we use this as part of our onboarding process for our consultants so they understand what does project delivery look like and what's the cadence of accountability around project delivery. You'll notice at the top of the page that journey team is underlined and has a little gray box around it. Because I have a Viva Topics license assigned to me, when this page load, that got highlighted. And what is it? A Viva Topic hover card, right? And so that hover card now shows up in modern SharePoint pages where it finds the term. So, so in this example, Mike, he didn't edit this page and make that a hyperlink, right? That this just happened magically on its own because that term got recognized on the page and a hover card hyperlink automatically got generated on the fly. Okay, so that's experience number two in regards to how topic pages expose our environment. So one was SharePoint search, hover card, right, within the search experience, then hover card on modern SharePoint pages. I want to say that one more time, modern. If you're on classic SharePoint, these, these uh, topic cards are not going to show up. Okay. All right, experience number three, outlook for the web. Now, I, I wish I could demo this in my in my client uh, outlook, but it doesn't exist yet. But let me give you an example. So I'm gonna shoot an email over to Rhett. 
cast for um, BTS session. And in the body, test topic, and I'm going to hit the pound or the hash. And what do I get? I get topics. Okay. And I can actually start typing topics. And that little prompt will just accordingly. So I can select estimate of work and keep typing. And I can send that to Rhett and that hashtag when he receives the email will give him the topic cover card in his Outlook for the Web mail client. This is on the docket to come to Exchange or, or in the desktop version of Outlook. Right now, it's only in the web version currently. Okay, and I can hit send. Okay, experience number, geez, what experience number are we on? Uh, let's hop over to PowerPoint. So back to my slide deck on Viva Topics. I'm going to open that up. Here's my slide deck. If I come up to search, I can type a search for the UMC. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. And as you can see, I get search results for UMC. I could get files and I can actually get topics as well. So, um, and I messed up find in document. I think it's just the, let me try more search. Yeah, here you go. And you can see here, here's the topic for UMC. And here's the topic card showing up in my office productivity suite. So if I clicked on this second leak where it says topic published, then that will navigate me to the topic center to the topic page, right? So that's another way that it shows up. All right, let me give you another one. I can hop into one-on-one -on -one chat. Let me find my chat. Give me a second. Where is my, I had a group of people here. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's my group chat. And I can do the same thing. So in a group chat, I can hit the pound key. And I can start typing and find topics as well. So in this example, if I chose, you know, Vanderbilt again. And I hit submit, you'll see that Vanderbilt's a hyperlink if I mouse over. I get the Viva topic card from within the Teams chat. Okay. I want to be very clear here. This is only for um, chats, not posts in Teams. I'm assuming that's coming in our tenant. I don't want to demo something. Like, I only want to demo what's live, right? And so, this is live. Um, there is some other future stuff coming. Hopefully, posts will include it as well. But this is another way that I can have Viva Topics show up, okay? And eventually what's going to happen is terms within the chat will automatically pick up based upon conversations, just like modern SharePoint, where I'll get a Viva Topic card as well for those chats, okay? Let me go back to the, the uh, teams really quick. Questions so far in regards to Viva Topics being exposed on the interfaces. Um, and I'm using this as an opportune time to look at my notes to make sure I didn't miss any uh, demoing. Okay. All right. Question, Jason. The hashtag feature looks like a Teams channel. A bit confusing to know when to use which. Is the topic yet another SharePoint site behind the scenes? Um, is the topic yet another SharePoint site behind the scenes? So um, what's really happening is the topic center is a SharePoint site collection, and it's a type of SharePoint site template. And the site pages library is the topic pages. Um, all the hashtags showing up in search and everywhere else, they're just references back to the pages within the topic center site. Hopefully that helps.
Good. All right. So let's talk about uh, and we're almost wrapped up here, actually, believe it or not. So let's let's talk about some of the other future things that are coming after I cover this last administrative tool. Kind of look a uh, wiki pages on steroids. I agree. It, and I think. Not just wiki, I mean, it doesn't have the wiki feature, right, because you have to be an authorized person, right, to be able to modify uh, the topic page. But it's really interesting in the sense of it's not where the top, it's not where the knowledge is. It's just a pointer to the knowledge being somewhere else. So it's almost, if you don't mind me saying, Jim, it's almost the the, the lazy version of knowledge management. It's like, no, no, no. we're not going to go out of our way and create knowledge articles. We're just going to let this engine find that content elsewhere, and we'll create a page that points everywhere else. <laughs> you know, so it's almost like the, the poor man's version. Now, the nice part about this is, what did I have to do to get a bunch of topics? Nothing. I got a bunch of topics and I, I hit publish on a bunch of them. Right. And and ironically enough, there's not a there's not a topic for content that doesn't exist. Now, I could go in and create all my own topic pages if I want to be proactive. But if I didn't want to be proactive, I can get some benefit fairly quickly without much effort on my part. So it's 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 interesting from that perspective. Certainly. Okay, let me show you another administrative uh, functionality, and then we'll talk about what's coming in the future, and then we'll open up for questions. So one cool, cool feature. This is a little bit of a nerdy, nerdy feature set, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Is around um, search. So there's a search setting, and then a, a configuration around um, the term store. So if I go to my admin view and I go to search and intelligence, I can now, it now has a section for Viva topics. I can see how many topics are visible, how many of them are being discovered and et cetera. So I get some, I get some analytics, right? Around how Viva topics are being exposed. So that's kind of a nice thing. I'm assuming this is just gonna grow, right? Over time in regards to the data that we get. The cool integration feature that I'm, I'm kind of totally Jones in here is around, um, it is around the managed metadata term store. So if I go to the SharePoint Admin Center, let this load up, and I go to content services, and I go to the term store, I can expand a term. And if you guys want me to explain what this is, put that in the chat right now. Um, I don't want to explain it unless someone is like, hey, I don't understand what you're doing here. So, um, but yeah, if I go to the term store and I go to technologies, check this out. I can go to SharePoint 2016 term. And I can go to usage settings and look at this. I can request. The engine for Viva topics to consider SharePoint 2016 as a topic or not. So I can start creating a relationship between terms in the term store and Viva topics. Now, the relationship in itself is just kind of cool, right? Because let's be frank, if, if you're in your organization and you have terms, you should probably have a topic that represents the terms. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a term. So, so that's one. But this starts opening up possibility in my mind. Right. Imagine, and I don't even know if this is true, but imagine that I have a document library and I have tagging in that document library and those tags are coming from the term store and I can flag a document and as related to SharePoint 2016 and it doesn't stop there. I can now mouse over SharePoint 2016 as a tag, as a metadata value within the document library and be able to go to the topic page now. This was always something that was difficult because what happened is so many people through the years, they wanted to make a term, but they wanted to provide context and data around the term. Maybe we can now do that, right? Utilizing Viva Topics and this integration with the term set. So kind of pretty slick possibilities that I, I'm kind of seeing on the horizon around what could happen here. So pretty neat stuff. So you can manually create those terms. Oh, I see what you're saying, Jim Bob. So um, right now it doesn't propagate the terms in the term store based upon what's in the Viva Topic Center. So you would still have to create the terms and make the connection 
or suggest to Viva topics that this should be a Viva topic, this term store, and then it will create the connection between the two. Okay, but the, the possibilities are pretty strong there. I, I'm actually pretty excited about it. Okay, any other questions on term store or that integration? All right, let's talk about some new announcements from Microsoft. Oh wait, we have a question. Uh, if they would let us group views on terms the same way as a choice column, then maybe we'll consider using terms. <laughs> yeah. Well, and well, yeah. Um, side note. All right. So let's let's hop back into our presentation. Wrong presentation. All right. Okay. So a few things coming down the pipeline. Classifications of topics. So this is what I was kind of alluding to earlier that we didn't have that we'll have now. So I, I, I'm actually jonesing about this. So, um, so ultimately what I'm getting at here is this, if you look here, this is class, this typic, typical topic is classified as a project. Right. So now I can start that. Let me say it this way. Six months ago, I was like, no, 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 I'm going to hack this. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our own metadata properties in the pages library in the topic center. And we're going to classify all the topics ourselves. And then we're going to use search and we can serve up topics based upon our own classifications. Which you could do, which we've already started playing with. This makes it so we don't probably have to do that. <laughs> so. And, and so obviously we thought about it and, and we're not the only ones because Microsoft has now integrated that as part of Viva Topics. So, so this could be valuable because now we can say like not, not have this elusive like it's a topic. What is it? No, no, no. These are projects. These are clients. These are acronyms, right? These are uh, services that we provide, et cetera. And now we can start having stronger ties of knowledge and classifications around the knowledge by the ability for us to classify topics. So super cool stuff. Supposedly, this is rolled out this month. Okay. Next, Viva Topics coming to Yammer, um, aka Viva Engage. So, uh, there is going to be uh, integrations with Viva Topics and an FAQ feature set that is going to be coming to Viva Engage, aka Yammer, uh, later this month. Um, I don't know exactly what that tie-in looks like, it, if it's one way or the other, or if we can classify the, the question. I, I don't know the details yet. We don't have access to this, so I haven't been able to demo it, but I want to put on your radar that this is coming uh, in the future. Next, uh, Viva Topics showing up on contact cards. <laughs> Pretty awesome. So uh, here's a common contact card. Uh, when I hover over my picture on a page and then this contact card comes up in between about me and the contact information above i could associate myself with numerous topics and those topics would be available on the topic card this starts opening up the realm for me to access and find people and or see maybe levels of expertise or ownership based upon a uh, relationship with with topics within our environment. So that's another up and coming item that was that I thought was valuable. Hopefully those kind of those are really short up and coming like this month. Um, so kind of keep those in mind. There's, of course, other things, but I, I don't want to try to like give you up and coming things that don't get released until a year from now, right? Or six months. So I want to keep relevant to the to the to the current time. Couple thoughts, conclusions, and considerations. We haven't addressed the navigation to knowledge. If you notice, all of that user experience is like searching and nonchalant finding, right? Like, oh, what's this, right? So, but what if I wanted to navigate and say, oh, I'm looking for a policy procedure related to this, and I want to navigate through a structure to a knowledge article that's lacking? Um, I hope through the classifications of topics that Microsoft is bringing to the table, that that will help. Now, they are pages. So theoretically, we could utilize pages to create search scopes and other things, and even programmatically, even probably build navigation to be the topics on the front end. 
Um, we haven't done that yet. It's been some conversations with a few of our clients that are are on that is highly interested in Viva Topics. The possibilities are there, but out of the box, that feature set doesn't exist. Okay. We talked about future uh, integrations coming. Um, one of the future integrations that I'm really excited about is the ability for the artificial intelligence engine to grab content from other systems. That could be huge. Okay. One thing to consider, publishing takes about 24 hours, right? So this isn't like, oh, I need to create a topic page and have it scrub the entire environment and create referenceable links to content and people all within the next five minutes. That's not how this works, right? So it's utilizing search on the back end to serve up the content. It takes some time. This is a kind of a curated process, okay? And then the last thing I want to cover is, you know, what does licensing look like? And I know we didn't talk about all of the things related to Viva Topics or Viva. Um, and, and in fact, this slide is not even true uh, because there's other aspects of Viva that's available uh, above and beyond what you see here. But nonetheless, if you have a Microsoft e uh, eSKU licensing, you get Viva Engage, which is Yammer, and Viva Connections, which is exposing your internet within Teams, that's included. Viva Topics, if you're just going to per purchase Viva Topics on its own, it's currently $4 per user um, within Microsoft 365. Or you can sign up for the Microsoft Viva Suite license, which gives you topics, Viva Learning, Viva Insights, Viva Goals, and, and future Viva Engage, Viva Amplify, and these other new modules that have been released um, I believe there's a topic later today on BTS over some of these new Viva modules. So if you're interested in learning about those, go check out that session. Okay. And lastly, questions. So we roughly have about 15 minutes before our time is up. I'm sure Easton will throw um, throw our uh, survey into the chat. But what questions do you guys have that I can answer? Ah, uh, good question. So. Uh, Lane, oh, actually, Lane, you're, you're next. Uh, Jim Bob, could you have, uh, could you have a single topic have multiple classifications? Um, we're top, yeah, I don't know yet, right? It's not released and we haven't played with it yet. So, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that, if we can have more, more than one classification. When we plan to do it, we were planning on using a, a metadata property within the pages library, of course, which would allow us to do that. But I'm not sure if Microsoft's using that same idea and approach on the classifications. Lane, uh, seems like they're, uh, this is using syntax behind the scenes. Do you get syntax features with the Viva license? Are topics auto updated when a new documents are uploaded or does an admin need to review and republish? Yeah, good question. So I don't know if it's using syntax to, to be honest, to find the keywords. Let me pause for a second. I don't think so. So let's be let's be clear on what syntax is. So syntax requires you to build a model, and that model during the model creation process for syntax, I can tell it to look for certain words within the document or to do certain things to extract a value out of the document and then apply it as metadata, right? Um there's no modeling happening on the back end. I, I actually think what syntax or what topics is doing is just using search. We know that search indexes the content of documents, period, right? If, if I do a search for view MC and I don't click on the topic page, I'll probably more likely get search results of all the related documents and people anyway that Viva Topics exposes, right? In my standard search results. So it's probably just utilizing search. Um, but to answer your question, which is the real question is, do you get some syntax stuff or licensing? And the answer is no, that, that will be still be a different licensing skew. And then the other question is, uh, will the new documents be uploaded? Yes. So suggested documents, suggested uh, sites and suggested people will evolve and change over time. Anything that you pin will stay pinned. Um, the other thing I failed to tell you guys, my apologies, is we're talking about search, remember? Federated. So if I go to that Viva topic page, 
I'm going to see different results than what Larry might see or that Justin might see because those because it's federated search results, right? So I'm going to see that content by which I have access to. Justin's going to see a different set of documents that he only has access to. Now, that's a benefit, right? Because the idea is we don't want this exposing content that it shouldn't expose, right? And it, it defaults to the security frameworks that you guys have in place to ensure we're not seeing stuff that we shouldn't see. Any other questions? And Easton threw the survey in there. So guys, please, you know, take the survey. Let us know how this session was, if it was valuable. Um, I, I think that the key thing is, it, one, you can, there's, th this is a per user licensing skew. So I guess my call to action for this group, if this is something where you're like, hey, I'm interested maybe in this, is, Buy a Viva license, like two, if you wanted to. That You know what I mean? We're talking minimal cost for two people. And test it out and validate. I mean, if, if we're really talking here, the cost of this, and this might mean that people might save, you know, so many hours a year getting the content they need to be more efficient in their jobs. In my opinion, for a lot of organizations, this will pay for itself easily. So, um, but there's a great way for you to try it out. And, the, and the, the way we do that is just buy a couple licenses for a handful of users and validate and confirm that this is something that'll be productive to your, uh, to your organization. So, okay, Easton, that's all I got, man. All right, Kipple, thanks. Um, it looks like we did have one uh, more question oh. come in when you're talking uh, from Jim Bob. He said, uh, what do you wish you had more time to geek out about this session in this session? Um, probably all the different business use cases of how we could use this. At first, when I first started playing with this, I really struggled because I, I've had this paradigm that you build a knowledge base and in the knowledge base, you have knowledge articles, right? And we build navigation and we access knowledge articles and Viva is so different, right? These aren't knowledge articles. They're knowledge article pointers. Those are things that, that go everywhere else. And so I've really struggled with for certain organizations. Like if you guys don't, if you don't mind bearing with me, and if you don't want to hear this, blame Jim Bob. Let, let's say that we we on our internets, we have a policies and procedures section, right? And we have all these standard operating procedures that our employees should reference all the time. Do you build those still on the internet? and then build a topic page that points to them? Or do you scrap the SOPs in your internet and actually build them out all in topics instead? And those are some of the nuances that I think there's pros and cons to both aspects of it, but those are the fun kind of oh, interesting, right? Like what is the ideal state here? Um, in regards to the organizational, where do I put the content or do I strictly treat topics as this elusive thing that just helps me find things, but that's not where I go to organize knowledge. And, and I was, I would lean in the, in the direction of, I know I organize knowledge everywhere else, but in topics, and I use topics as a feature set to get to it. However, with them starting to do the classifications, now I'm like, well, you know, maybe, right? And I would assume it's just a matter of time until Microsoft says that, you know what, you can have more than one topic center. Because that's the other thing, is I didn't like that idea, right? If I could create all the standard operating procedures in one place, then I'd make that a topic center. And then if I could put products and services underneath marketing, I'd make that a topic center, right? And then I could organize and have the best of both worlds. Can't do that today. Everything has to be centrally located. I'm not sure if I like that, right? Especially from a governance of who's governing the content. All right, I'm nerded out. That, that's all the nerding out you're going to get, Jim. Bob.